I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and esp- I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. To use a simile, communism is like a time bomb, innocent enough on the surface, just a box. It isn't until you get inside that you find the dynamite intended to blow you apart. I know because for nine years I was inside the party. I met the red dynamite on its own terms. And one thing I found out while working as an undercover man, you, mister, yes, and you too, lady, you're target for that red exp- the explosion that was my job to help prevent. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, undercover man. Dana Andrews, Mac Anderman. Story from Financial Files marked The Dangerous Dollars. Young Communist League, $6,809.44. Dues paid in full. Contributions up three and a half percent. Good. The Committee for the Protection of the Foreign Born? Eleven thousand two hundred. Dues in full. Contributions down point five. Notice collection from Comrade Hartig cell is up a hundred. I was assigned to the Communist Finance Committee in charge of collections for the district, and I watched the figure of Comrade Noor's adding sheen. Money, big money, from reds and from just plain suckers. Due paid monthly, contributions paid as often as could be squeezed out of so-called voluntary donors. Subversive activity is expensive, and it was my job to come pay for it, and to make sure the FBI knew where the money came from and where it came Hey, Jumbo Red Hot. Come on, get your popcorn here, mister. Be a sport, feed the pigeons. Sure. Uh, give me an order of 17 peanuts. 17's a lucky number. For a man who eats red popcorn... Oh, Jay Cox, how's business? Lousy. But I love blowing this darn whistle. That's what I like about the FBI. The agents have so much talent. Never mind my talent. Did you trace that money? Yeah, I think so. The big portion goes to party headquarters in New York, of course. But there's one other shot picked up by a special messenger. Regularly? Well, past six weeks, anyway. Who's the messenger? Who gets the money? I don't know. And the messenger I know only by number. Forty-three. The blonde woman. Tall, beautiful as you like the type, and who doesn't? Slavic accent. She's due to make a pickup tonight. Good. I'll have men waiting to tailor. Important? Plenty. This is a hot one, Matt. Meet me in my office tonight at 11. I want to give you a rundown. There's a... Come on, buddy. You've window shop long enough. Beat it. Make room for the customers. Peanut. Big Jumbo Red Hot here. Here, comrade. All mm. increase of 79... Satisfy National Headquarters, Comrade Matt? Please them, perhaps. Satisfy them, no. Okay, Comrade Nora. I think we've done enough for tonight. Let's wrap it up and... Oh, Comrade Matt, it's her, 43. Well, good evening, Comrade. Good evening. Good evening. Your package is there on the desk. 18,000. And $10. Count it. I'm sure it's right. Your figures are always right. The sign of your intelligence. Oh, bully for me. You're a very interesting man, Comrade Fetic. Someday we may be able to meet on more social terms and discuss your intriguing nature. Good night, Comrade. Good night. Comrade, did you see that coat? Mink. 
And that dress, why, it was outrageously bourgeois. Oh, she should be investigated. I don't trust that one. You forget, she's on special assignment. Undoubtedly, her clothing is a requirement. Well, it's time for us to close up. Will you walk me home, Matt? Uh, Comrade Matt? Well, well, I'd I'd like to, but not tonight. I want to pick up some things at the drugstore before it closes. Well, there's one on the way to my place. I I wouldn't mind waiting. Well, sure, on interest because she was lonely, or could she have somehow discovered I was to meet my FBI contact that night? It wasn't until I was entering Nora's apartment that I was reassured of her motive. Come on in. I want you to meet my children. Children? (laughs) Well, that's what I call them. Here, babies, come to Mama. Oh, here they come. Holy cats. Cats. My babies. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, it was a pretty tragic sight. A homely girl so starved for affection, she adopted cats to take the place of the children she'd never have. As soon as I could, I ducked out, and after a complicated series of turns and doubling back and forth to throw off any possible tail, I went to the federal building and up the rear way to the office of my FBI contact, Frank Jaycox. Oh, hi, Matt. You're late. Yeah, I had an unexpected delay. Uh, what is it, Jaycox? It's an MVD agent, Krasnov. He the guy 43 is delivering to? We think so. Only we don't know that he's a he. What? All we have is the name, Krasnov. Otherwise, it's man, woman, or monkey. He pays your money and you take your choice. But you've got men following 43. If she takes that money to Krasnov, you'll know soon whether he's a man or not. Krasnov's sex is not the problem. It is. Sabotage. Krasnov was the commie secret police agent behind a job in a West Coast aircraft plant a while back. Looked production for weeks. You got proof? Yeah. We got him nailed if we can find him. If? You're going to come 43 like a blanket. She'll lead you to him. Maybe. And it seems too easy. Krasnov is the Red's top agent. Word we've gotten is that Krasnov plans to import a small but highly trained group. Specialists in arson, demolition, and murder. Whew. Yeah. It's the kind of organization we can't afford to let get started. And that's the why of it, Matt. Krasnov and that money have got to be stopped. <laughs> Who's calling? Just a moment. Comrade Matt, it's a Mr. Jorgensen for you. I'll take it here. I've got it, Nora. Uh, Of course, I'm sorry. Hello, Mr. Jorgensen. I didn't expect you to call me here. I know it's dangerous, Matt, but I had to talk to you fast. Oh, your wife's operation didn't go too well last night? You guessed it. Where was it done? 43 was trailed to a small resort called Skyline Rancho, up in the mountains about 100 miles north of here. The resort is a commie hang-on. No one can get past the desk unless he's a rent. Oh. Uh, have you tried another doctor? If you mean force, no. So? So we've got to get an agent inside that resort. Someone who can move around, find out which one of the guests or employees is Krasnov. Where the money is, what Krasnov plans to do with it. It sounds like a tough operation. You'd better have a good surgeon. We have. Who? You. What? Sorry, Matt, but you're the only one who can do it. As a commie, you can get in. You've got a vacation coming. Take it. At Skyline Rancho. Well, there it was, right in my lap. It was that kind of assignment, so the first thing I did was to make sure my life insurance policies were paid up. The next thing was to get off from work without arousing suspicion. Comrade Nora, my assistant, made it easy. Comrade Matt, here's the vouchers. Matt, what's the matter? You look ill. Oh, I guess I'm just tired out. Oh, what a headache I got. You should take a rest. Oh, I can handle things for a few days without any problem at all. Do, Do you think you could? You wouldn't mind? Oh, certainly not. You know I'd do anything for you. Uh, yeah... I wonder where I could go. Oh, goodness, there's plenty of places to go, Comrade Matt. There's Chateau Regal, Victor Ski Lodge, Skyline Rancho, or... The Skyline Rancho. Well, it sounds like it might be nice. Oh, no. All right, Comrade, you've made up my mind. I'll go. Oh, 
Welcome to Skyline Rancho, Mr. Uh... Sibetic. Here. Thank you. I'm Mr. Hungerford, the owner. Uh, odd coincidence, you're coming to this resort? It was well recommended. I'd never heard of it. Who recommended it? I, uh, I want to write and thank them. Nora Bayless, my assistant. Why not call her? You'll get the answers quicker. <laughs> you're a clever one. Come with me, I'll show you around. <laughs> Skyline Rancho turned out to be a small group of buck and a main lot flat, heavily wooded mesa. After seeing my bag stowed in bungalow number eight, I let the suave Hungerford take me to the main lodge to meet the other guests. Oh, Hungerford, there you are. Let's go outside. Coma Benices is clear tonight, and Vega is unusually bright. Later, Charlie. Matt's Vatic, Charlie Grace, are about the things in our heavens. It's just disgraceful. <laughs> Which one? You met them all, but which one was Krasnov, the MVD agent? The last one I met was a squat ape of a man with black fingernails and an expression like the devil with a hangover. This is Mr. Kane, Matt Svedek. Hi. Hi. Been here long? Nah. Hmm. Well, it's nice to see you're having such a happy time. Later that night, I decided to make my own private survey of the resort. I found nothing interesting around the bungalows, and the stables contained nothing but horses. But when I left the stable, I found myself pinned in the brilliance of two powerful flashlights that blinded me. It's late, Svedek. You'd better go to bed. This night air is cold. It could be the death of you. Back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. So far, I was getting no place in my search for the MVD agent Krasnov. All I had done was met a few guests at Skyline Rancho, and from the darkness received a warning about which I was still worried the next morning as I shaved. For the love of Pete. Now what? Tom! Well, how are you this morning, Mr. Sveddick? None the better for that warning last night. Warning? Don't be coy. You're not the type. But I... I recognized your voice. Look, I'm on vacation. What your deal is here, I don't know and care less. Good morning. Now, what did that mean? You. Me. What are you doing in my bungalow, Comrade 43? I like being in your bungalow. Well, why? <laughs> why not? Because oh, it's early morning and now, I... Now, what have you got against morning? Oh, nothing, but... Yeah? Matt? Yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. Jorgensen. How are things with your mother? Mm, all right. She had a few early complications, but at the moment, she's holding her own. Doctor's diagnosis very dangerous? Worse than expected by the symptoms. I'll let you know how things develop, Mr. Jorgensen. So for heaven's sake, stop calling me. I understand. I'll wait for your call. That bum. What is it, Matt? Oh, nothing. Mom's been a little sick, and this friend of hers keeps calling me to find out how she is. Oh. Well, let's forget other people's troubles and work on our own. Yeah, only start with you being the reason for me being threatened last night. I will if... if you sit here beside me. Okay. Now make it good, Comrade 43. I'll begin with my name. It's Connie Marachek. You know mine? Yes. Yeah. And you know I'm on special assignment for the party. What? Oh, sorry, Matt, it's secret, even to you. But it's very important to the party, so much so that... When I saw you up here, well, let's say the coincidence made me suspicious. 
I don't hunger for it. And when he saw me taking a walk around in the dark, he pulled that flashlight routine. It was his idea of teaching you a lesson. I apologize, Matt. I should have waited before saying anything to Hungerford. I agree to that. Threats give me a headache. Oh. Why don't you lie down and put your head in my lap, hmm? Let me rub your temples. Sure. Go to it. Huh. It's a nice lap. Mm -hmm. You like me just a little, Matt? You ever find a man who didn't? I never found a man like you before. Well, Connie. Hmm? What would have happened if Hungerford had decided I was really a spy? He'd have shot you, I guess. Oh, but you're not a spy, so let's not talk about it anymore. What do we talk about? Why talk at all? Head feel better, darling. What head? <laughs> I'd better go. But do me a favor, Matt. Those walks, don't take them. Connie gave me a smile that could have melted a ten-foot snowdrift and left me with one very positive determination. To take that walk everyone was so worried about. I ran into my first obstacle in front of my bungalow, a hollow-chested plaid coat supporting two binocular cases and waving a long, jaunted brass telescope. Good morning. Good morning. Who are you? It's afternoon, and we've met, Mr. Grace. Hmm? Oh, yes, Mr. Svetik, I remember now. Oh, my goodness, call me Charlie. Everybody calls me Charlie. Good for them. Bye. Oh, oh don't go. I want to show you I've something. seen it. Why don't you toddle on to the main lodge, Charlie? Your aunt's waiting. Charlie Grace gone, I headed in the opposite direction, past the stables, searching for whatever it was I wasn't supposed to see. My first success was a faint path leading into the trees, a footpath. Two miles through the trees, I found Krasnow's secret, a tiny airstrip and camouflaged hangar. In the hangar, a powerful black cabin plane equipped with extra wing tanks all full to the top. It was information worth a big risk. I hurried back and took the risk by calling my FBI contact, Jay Cox, from a payphone in the lobby of the main lodge. Jorgensen speaking. Jay, this is Matt. I'm sorry, but this is hot and I can't double talk it. Go. Oh. Krasnov's got a plane stashed out on an airstrip back in the trees. A cabin plane. No NC number. It's painted black. Extra tanks all full. A guy staying here named Kane. His nails are full of black grease. I figure he... Krasnov? I haven't spotted him yet. But I'm playing footsies with his messenger, 43. Her name's Connie Marachek. Marachek, got it. You'd better get Krasnov fast. Black plane, night flight, wing tanks... Long flight, probably to Canada or Mexico. Yeah. Hate to ask you to do this, Matt, but you'd better jimmy that plane first thing. Do what? You have to. We can't let them escape now. You know anything about planes? They got wings and they fly. In that case, open the engine cover, reach in and grab something. Yeah. Then what? Pull. If it comes loose, you're right. <laughs> It was nearly dark when I made it back to the plane, and my luck held as I opened the engine cover and yanked loose a copper tube that spewed gasoline. It was the plane's fuel line. And that was when my luck started to run out, for across the clearing I could see Hungerford and Kane coming toward the hangar. I retreated into the dubious shelter of some boxes in a far corner and waited. Come on, Kane. Let's get this plane out on the field. Wait till I get the tool room open. I want to give the motor a last check out. Oh, let that go, Kane. You've checked it a dozen times already. Uh, but I want to be... I said forget it. Now, come on. Help me roll the plane down to the end of the strip so Krasnov can take off without delay. I watched as the plane was pushed out and down the field several hundred yards. It was turned into the wind, ready to take off. So they thought. When the two men headed back to the hangar, I got an idea. 
I tied a long piece of wire to a heavy wrench on the table inside the windowless tool room, ran the loose wire out to my hiding place among the boxes. When Hungerford and Kane entered the hangar, I yanked the wire so it pulled the wrench off the table in the tool room. What's that? It came from the tool room. Let's take a look. It was close timing. When Hungerford and Kane moved cautiously into the tool room, I came out from behind the boxes and moved to the open door, then... Hey, what is this? Open this door! The room had no windows, so I knew the two reds were in for keeps until that door was opened. Scratch two. Next stop, Krasnov. But you have to flush a quail before you can shoot it. So back at the lodge, I dug up the last of my nerve for a bluff that had my heart pounding like a pneumatic drill. Matt, what's the matter? You look so... Connie, I, I've got to talk to you. What is it, Matt? Look, I don't know what assignment you're on, but if it's got anything to do with someone named Krasnov, get him out of here in a hurry. Why? FBI men, two of them. I overheard them talking. Where? Are you sure? I'm sure. One of them followed Hungerford and Kane into the woods back of the stables, and the other left said he was going to bring up the rest. Rest? Where they talk, they've got a whole army coming in. But they can't. That is, we have to get away before... We? You mean this Krasnov person and you? Yes. You may as well know the whole thing now, Matt. You've proven I can trust you. The money I delivered went to Krasnov for him to use in organizing a sabotage ring. Charlie, come here, quick. Of course, my dear, but do be quick. I want to plot the position of Sagittarius. You can drop the act. Matt, this is Major Krasnov of the secret police. Tell him what you told me. When Connie spoke, Charlie Grace changed, and suddenly the harmless stargazer didn't seem quite so harmless. After I told my story, the MVD agent went into action, racing to his bungalow and picking up a valise. Then, with Connie in tow, he vanished down the path to the airfield. I waited near the stables, and in 16 minutes by my watch, they were back, running. Matt, that the plane won't work. The FBI man broke the fuel line. We'll have to use a car. No, you... Huh? Uh, I mean, that is, the FBI will be watching the road. Yeah, it's very probable. We'll have to get out of here before they move in. Wait a minute. I've got it. Take horses. You can shortcut down the mountain to Asheville and catch the train there for the city. Of course. They won't be expecting us to use horses. True. And we can charter a plane in the city. Thanks, Comrade Svetik. You've been a great help. It was my pleasure, Major Krasnov. Believe me. I watched Krasnov and Connie ride their horses into the darkness. Then in the main lodge, I went to the payphone and made a call that was a real pleasure. Hi, Jay. Better meet the train coming in from Asheville. Couple of people on it you'll want to see. Krasnov? Yeah. I found out. He's a he. You'll know him. He'll be with Connie Marachek. Oh, and uh, he'll be carrying a valise. Take good care of it. It's full of happy cabbage. Don't worry. We'll take care of it. And while you're at it, send a squad of men up here to make a phony raid to cover my story. They'll find two men locked in the tool room of the hangar. Got it. You coming back to city? Sure. I've got to get back to my little red cabbage patch. There it was, another fragment of the story. A man's life is made up of bits and pieces. Only a purpose can give them meaning. I found my purpose in the underground fight against communism. It was no fun, but don't mistake me. It was worth it to know I was helping in the struggle to keep freedom alive. It was worth it even though it cost me my friends and made me a man who always had to walk alone. Our star, Dana Andrews, will return in just a moment. Many of the stories of Matt Svetik's underground war against communism are dramatizations of incidents from Matt Svetik's own confidential file, compiled during the nine years he was a communist for the FBI. To protect the innocent, all names, dates, and localities have been changed. Next week, we'll bring you another exciting adventure of Matt Svetik. We hope you'll join us. 